Welcome to Eat Right Now. My name is Jill Jennings. I'm a registered dietitian nutritionist in the Department of Family Medicine at ECU's Brody School of Medicine. If you're someone who's looking to control your diabetes better through diet, or if you're looking to manage your weight more successfully, or if you're just looking to feel better overall, you may have heard from a lot of different sources what you can't eat. I'd like to talk about what you can eat. Let's get started. Today, I would like to make an alternative to a classic southern dish, deep fried fish. While it's delicious, it is high in calories, it's high in fat. When you're trying to maintain or lose weight, control your weight, when you're looking to for good heart health, fried fish or fried foods in general are often not such a good idea. On occasion, that's okay. But as a regular way of preparing your foods, we would like to try to encourage people to do more pan cooking, stovetop cooking, or grilling, or broiling, or steaming. Here's a great alternative to that fried dish. I've got a couple of cast iron skillets heating on the stove. A well-seasoned cast iron skillet is an excellent non-stick surface. So if you don't have a non-stick skillet, but you've got a well-seasoned cast iron skillet, use it. You can use it for a lot of things. And what that does, that slick surface, keeps you from having to add too much oil. And that's the goal here. What I'd like to make is some pan-fried tilapia. You could use any white fish. You could use cod if you prefer that. You could use catfish. You could use drum. Whatever fish either you have on hand or you prefer, get that, frozen or fresh. If it's frozen, just let it thaw the night before in the refrigerator. I will coat it with a little bit of egg wash, egg white wash. You could use milk if you wanted. And then uh, roll it or not toss it, um, coat it in some cornmeal that I've flavored with Old Bay. And that's a particular favorite of mine. I'm from New England, so um, that's familiar and a favorite of, of mine. Uh, some, a little bit of hot pepper. I've got Tabasco sauce here, but that's really for the end if you wanted a little extra dash of, of heat when the fish is cooked. Some canola oil, that's what I'll cook it in. That's a good heart-friendly oil. And you want to use the canola versus olive oil wouldn't be so good in this case because it, it, it's, it would be too easy to burn. So canola is a good choice. And some salt and some pepper. So the cornmeal is actually flavored with those things, a little bit of each. I'll also prepare a slaw, a cabbage slaw. It's a pre-made or pre-shredded mix that saves time. So if time is a factor for you, or just even you know, health or ability is a factor, when you can buy ingredients that are already shredded for you, and a lot of times they're on sale, and they make preparing a full meal that much easier. So in the cabbage, I'm gonna put some, some uh, apples. So you can use any kind of apple. This is a Fuji apple, and that'll add some sweetness to the cabbage, and it will also be a serving of fruit along with serving of vegetables. And then a dressing here. Typically, coleslaw is made with a heavy mayonnaise-based dressing. That tends to be high in calories, high in fat. We're trying to cut back on those things. So here's a dressing that's made uh, with an alternate uh, recipe, and I'll, I'll tell you about that in a minute. And then a tartar sauce. Tartar sauce as well is usually made with mayonnaise as the base, a lot of it. And it's typically found in jars, or you can buy it, you can purchase it already made. And oftentimes it has a lot of sugar, a lot of salt, a lot of fat, a lot of calories. So this one is made with a base of yogurt. The reason I used yogurt here is because I didn't have low-fat sour cream. But you could use low-fat sour cream because they are interchangeable. They are, they, they, taste-wise, they are one in the same. So this is Greek yogurt and sour cream would be good, but I would encourage you to use low-fat sour cream if you're doing that because that's also like mayonnaise, high in fat, saturated fat, and high in calories. And add some other ingredients in there to make it as close to the dish that you're accustomed to eating 
and a little bit different as possible. So the first step I would like to take from here is to bread the fish and get it ready for the pans. Okay, so the reason I'm dipping the, the fish into the egg whites first is because I want to lock in that, want to lock in or seal in the moisture to the fish. I also need something for the breadcrumbs to adhere to. So I've got some cornmeal here with the added spices. I'm going to coat it evenly. What this is going to do, this combination, is going to produce a crunchy piece of fish. And so when you deep fry fish, it's got that nice crunch to it. But since I want to avoid that, I've got to come up with something else to make that happen. This works really well. If you didn't have egg whites on hand, you could use milk. A lot of people prefer to use milk, actually. I like to use the egg whites. But the key to that is that you want to dip the fish in the liquid first, and then the dry. And then when you put it in the pan with just a little bit of oil, it'll, it'll get that nice crunch that you're looking for. Plus, the cleanup is a lot easier. All right, so my pans have been heating for a while now. Uh, one, one thing that I like to do is just not get too close. I learned the hard way when I was a little girl not to get my hand too close to the pan. I can feel the heat radiating. I know they're hot. Another way to test it would be to just do a little uh, bit of water like that if it evaporates right away. Another way is to put the oil in, and if it starts to shimmer immediately, shimmer meaning it gets a lump, it starts to move around in the pan and takes on a different, a different quality than it, than it does when it's not hot, then I can put the fish right in. If it doesn't change right away, I'll let it heat in the pan and then add the fish. Because my objective here is to cook the fish as soon as it goes into the pan. I don't want it to absorb the oil because I would have to add more. And that would add more fat and calories. So I'm putting about a teaspoon in each, a little bit more. Again, you've seen before, this nozzle really helps you to control the amount of oil you put in. It's a great tool. So I have all my oils in a little bottle like that, and they can be found in pretty much any store these days. So the oil is not, I don't think it's hot enough yet, so I'll turn the heat up just a little bit, and I'll be able to tell when I put the fish in by the sound of it that it's ready. I'm glad to see that the oil is not smoking. All right, so I believe it's ready. No, actually it's not. What I'm looking for is that, is that sound. There's a little bit of a sizzle in the pan, but it's not quite ready. So I'm going to use the hand that I didn't just touch the fish with to adjust the heat. That's always a good idea in the kitchen. If you're touching something that could potentially have bacteria on it, keep one hand free when you can until you have a chance to wash them. Now I think they're probably hot enough. The oil is changing. It's hot enough. So I can hear it. There it is. And what that tells me is that it's going to be, it's already starting to create a crust. And lock in that moisture. Didn't have enough room in this one pan, but I bet a lot of you out there have skillets that are a lot larger than this that probably take up this whole space. So have this as a, as a backup to cook all the fish. I'm going to let those cook for a few minutes, probably uh, four or five minutes, depending on the thickness. Some of this, this will cook quicker because it's smaller. And then you've got, you know, some parts of the fish are, are thicker than others. So it may be that you know, this side of the fish is a little bit crispier, but that's kind of nice because you're looking for a crispy piece of fish. But you want to make sure that it's cooked all the way through. So I'm going to quick wash my hands and be right back. I can already see the fish cooking. I can start to, it's already starting to come through. 
So every so often I want to check. So it's starting to smoke and I, I don't want that because I don't want it to burn. I'm just going to adjust the heat. And one good thing about cast iron skillets is that they retain their heat because they're heavy. And so it's easier to control the heat on them. So once you get that, the right temperature, it's easy to keep it at that. So this piece is nearly ready to flip. These need a little bit more time. I'm going to put this together real quick. This might be the fastest coleslaw you ever put together. There's red cabbage, green cabbage, and carrots. You could get the broccoli slaw mix. There's all kinds of varieties out there. Here I've got some apples that I've cut up very finely or julienne them. Um, you could have chunks if you wanted. You didn't have to take the time to, to cut them up into these little matchstick sizes. And I've tossed them with some lemon juice. I didn't have any fresh lemon, so I use this. I always have this in the refrigerator. So, in a pinch, I've got this. Some people actually prefer this juice, whichever one works for you. I coated the apples with it so that they wouldn't turn brown. But even still, you can see they're not as white as they were. But that helps slow down. When the air hits the fruit, the lemon helps prevent them from browning. It works with a lot of fruits. So add those, and then the dressing. But I want to step away to the fish because I think this one needs to be turned. Oops. Okay, it's got that nice crunchy coating. Light brown. can tell that it's, it's going to be crunchy when I bite into it. These can use a little bit longer. I toss those together and then I've got a dressing here with some yogurt and just a little bit of sugar a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. I thinned it out with some water because it was a little too thick. I wanted to make it easier to, to toss. And then I'll taste it before I add any more. Some people like their coleslaw very creamy. Others just want to lightly coat it. I'm somewhere in the middle. So I'll taste it. See how colorful that is? And coleslaw is such a nice accompaniment to, to fish. And these are ready to turn. So nothing difficult here. It's just you gotta pay attention to this and this simultaneously. See how they just slide. You can tell just by the feel of this in the spatula that it's crisp. You want to be careful when you flip it not to splash it on you. Okay, and I bet that this is ready to come off. Almost. A little bit longer. I'm going to taste it, see if it needs anything else. One thing I did do, just to point out, made that dressing in advance. So it's been in the refrigerator, so it's ice cold. So when you add that to the ice cold cabbage and apples, it's really nice. It doesn't need anything. Well, there's the coleslaw. This piece of fish is ready to come off. I can tell, I can hear it. The coleslaw is such a nice balance of, of sweet and a little bit of tang. And then you've got the lemon, and the tang from the yogurt, and then the cabbage, the crunch of the cabbage is very good. And this is almost ready. One way, if you can, you can tell by sight, of course. You could also just look in real quick. Look into the thickest part of the fish. That's where you want to go. I know these thinner parts, they're cooked. But I just want to make sure that the inner part... I don't really want to break it up like this, but just a little corner. So I'm going to say it needs a little bit longer and then it will be ready. 
And while that's finishing up, I'm gonna make the tartar sauce. What I've got here is the yogurt, but you could use the low-fat sour cream. Again, they're so similar in flavor. And because I always have yogurt on hand, I almost always use yogurt instead of sour cream. I've come to like it better. Yogurt's kind of like eggs and onions and garlic. They're just, you can always find a use for them. They're multi-purpose. I put a little bit of mayonnaise. I'm putting in some dill relish here. Alternatively, what you could do is put some sour pickles in there, chop up some sour pickles and some capers. But how often do most of us have capers on hand in the refrigerator as opposed to relish? So I chose to use relish today. You could do the other and just use your favorite relish. Sweet dill, uh, sweet hot, whichever one you've got. And this fish is now ready. I turned the heat off the pans. If you're not accustomed to working with cast iron skillets, do remember that they hold on to their heat for a long time. Even in a half an hour or an hour, this pan is going to be possibly hot enough to need a towel or a, um, a uh, some kind of cover on my hand. So please remember that, especially if kids are around. Maybe put it to the back of the stove. And, but they stay hot a long time. We're back to the tartar sauce. So the dill relish, yogurt, a little bit of mayonnaise, and some fresh chopped scallions. I like adding scallions to dishes when they're raw versus onions because onions can be rather sharp. Onions raw can also be really difficult for people to digest. So when I want that bite, that oniony bite, I like to use scallions. Chives are an option too. So like I did with the slaw, before I add anything else, I want to taste it. Might not need anything. See how creamy that is? It looks, it looks and feels like tartar sauce. And it tastes like tartar sauce. So there is, let's say maybe a little bit of pepper. It's nice and tangy and the tang will go really well with the fish. It's, they're very good partners fish and tartar sauce. All right, so here is the tartar sauce done. But you can see the importance of tasting something before you just automatically add something to it because it may already be fine. I've got a nice platter over here that I had planned on using for something else, but I think it looks nice here. And see the fish. So if you are serving this to three people or four, four or five people, you can split these pieces in half if you wanted. And let's see. You can do that just like this. Or whole fish per person. All so we've got this crispy piece of fish, nice and moist. Highly flavorful, and we used a teaspoon of oil in the pan. So I want to taste it and see, test out the crisp. And I want to taste it with a little bit of the tartar sauce too. Let's see if it's... That's very nice. This matches that perfectly. It's crispy and tender, which is what I wanted it to be. Okay, so now I'll plate, plate this up. 
you would be a nice portion size of fish. Put a little bit of the tartar sauce, a couple of tablespoons worth. And some coleslaw, your fruit and your vegetable. Just a little bit of carbohydrate in the apples, virtually none in the, in the cabbage. So this whole meal here is a very low carbohydrate meal. Perhaps a piece of cornbread on the side would be nice. If I had some lemon, I would put some pieces around there just because then some people like to drizzle it. But you could also use this, but just for, for you know, the way the plate looks, the, the lemon would be nice. If you would like to make this at home, please visit our website. Otherwise, eat right now, eat right tomorrow, eat right every day. Thanks for joining me.